Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzzweaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, pop culture, social media, technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. I want to welcome all of you guys from New Tech and of course all of you here on YouTube for your guys' continued support. From the Euro-Asian Times, NASA says China could declare Moon as its own territory. Beijing urges U.S. to stop vilifying its space program. Now, as you guys have been here on the channel for quite some time, you know that we talk about China often. We also talk about our friends at ADV China, Winston and Matthew, who lived in China. Both of them together have over 20 years having lived in China and married Chinese wives. So they are some of my leading connections to understanding how China works. And we know that through soft power, China tries to make claims about territory and property. And, of course, we already see what's going on with Taiwan, where they claim it is part of their country and are, of course, itching to get it back. But they like to provoke. They like to intimidate. They like to try to make it look as though they are the victims so that they can then can react and feel justified by kind of a sense of revenge of, you know, the perceived uh, victimization that they have experienced over several hundred years from various nations across the world, and which is kind of why they're a bit xenophobic. But nonetheless, on Saturday, NASA Chief Bill Nelson said in an interview with Build Newspaper that China could someday land on the moon and declare the satellite its own territory. Now, we know of China's soft power. They use it here in the United States and throughout the world. Instead of being, say, a very provocative war-type mongering country, they are more of a soft power. So they go in and they kind of do manipulation, intimidation, and these sorts of tactics to get their enemies to make uh, a false move and or expose a weakness of their enemies to then exploit it. Some U.S. officials continuously slander China's normal and irrational space activities. The Chinese side strongly opposed such irresponsible statements, the diplomat said. So here you see it in their own language. They say the U.S. officials continually slander China's normal and rational space activities. Well, this is what they like to do. This is what the Chinese like to do. They like to perceive themselves as being a target because of their greatness, because of their might, because they are China number one. So, and I'm not trying to say that in a way to be uh, derisive towards the Chinese people or the country. I'm mostly pointing it towards the CCP. But it doesn't really end there because we saw like many of the particular agencies cover this because they too want to cover it, but not, you know, directly slam China, as we see here. China slams NASA, though. Chief Nelson, as race to the moons gets heated, U.S. wins support for effort to make rules for space as China pitches lunar plan to neighbors. So in other words, so basically what happens is, is the U.S. tries to find a coalition of nations to work together to be able to do space programs, as we see, for example, with the space station, International Space Station, which is why it's called the International Space Station, because, of course, they want it to be inclusive, where China is not very inclusive at all, as we see from Matthew and from Winston, that you'll never be Chinese, a very great uh, piece that they did, that no matter what anyone does, no matter where you're from, no matter how much contribution you make towards the Chinese people or to China, you will never be Chinese because they are basically, they're Chinese and then everyone else is a foreigner. Of course, this goes on across most of the mainstream media here in the U.S. China rejects NASA's accounts. It will take over the moon. And it was just kind of an interesting section here. So China has stepped up the pace of its space program in the past decade with exploration of the moon a focus. China made its first lunar uncrewed landing in 2013 and expects to launch rockets powerful enough to send astronauts to the moon towards the end of this decade. So we know that China can be very territorial. They can be somewhat adversarial, if, if for no other reason, to intimidate. And we see that through their soft power, particularly in Africa. Now, you'll be very hard-pressed to find an actual article that specifically outlines soft power in some instances. So you would have to go to either Matthew or uh, Winston's channels to actually see how they cover uh, ADV China or Serpent ZA or Lawai 86 channels to really kind of see. But I want to go down here to number five 
you can kind of see Chinese creditors are increasingly commercially oriented. We'll kind of cover these. The controversial resource backing lending model persists. And this is just kind of a fluff piece that kind of gradually eases someone into how China does its soft power. So number five, sophisticated contract terms are needed to manage high-risk borrowers. China has become a highly sophisticated lender to developing countries, building in large part of its experience with African countries, according to the authors of How China Lends Analysis. China loans contracts contain, or China, Chinese loan contracts contain more elaborate repayment safeguards that their, peer in, that their peers in the official creditor market. So, in other words, this is all very soft language to say that if lenders default on things, then the Chinese try to make claim to that infrastructure and part regions of those countries as kind of their own or kind of allowing them to take control of it because their lenders could not pay. See, uh, are other creditors more transparent than Chinese lenders? Now, that this, again, very soft language here from Carnegie to kind of, I don't know, maybe <laughs> I, I don't see who the author was, but you'll be hard-pressed to actually find an article that comes straight out and says, you know, China uses soft power. Here's how it actually works. But we can see it kind of, you know, in this article, very similar to our favorite article that I like to mention all the time, Molly Ball and the, of course, 2020 election when it comes to the, uh, you know, the cabal of people who work together to ensure an, a particular outcome as it were. So China is uh, continuing to make its uh, claims on the moon and its direction for international space. So it is kind of, or for space, and of course, continuing with international rules and laws. Of course, they want to kind of circumvent that so that they can have the power to decide what they want to do with their program. And that's what I have for you guys this Friday. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. Thank you for the likes, the shares, and the comments. Below this video, you can find the various social media links that I belong to, where you can see my daily post, as well as the Amazon link. If you guys are Prime members or order frequently from Amazon, you guys can use that link, go to the landing page, and search for what you're looking for. And of course, it helps out the channel. Here in 2022, thank you for the likes, the shares, for those on New Tech, as well as here on YouTube, and appearing right there on the screen for all of you watching on YouTube, that would be the channel icon. You can click on that to subscribe as well as to select notifications. That way you know when there's content here on the channel. And I'll see all you guys right there behind that camera next week.